I am a kingdom builder, building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KB, 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 say, I am a kingdom builder, building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KB, 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 say, I am a kingdom builder, building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. Here we go. We're reading God's word. We're doing what we heard. We're spreading God's love from John chapter 3rd. We're memorizing scripture. We don't hide it in our hearts. And when we're old, we will never depart. Why? I am a kingdom builder, building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KP, 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 set. Good morning, KB Kids, and welcome to worship today. I am Miss D, and guess what? It is volume number 67. Yes, we are on volume number 67, and I have enjoyed 67 weeks with you here on KB Kids Virtual Worship. I hope you have enjoyed as well. But I have a question for you. How was your week? Did you guys have a great week? I hope you had a great week. I had a fantastic week. I am enjoying my summer immensely. Getting a little bit of extra sleep, you know, um, time to do some things around the house I haven't gotten done, um, read some books. I've met some new friends this week. It has been a really great week. I hope you're enjoying your summer. And more importantly, I hope that you are ready for part four of our summer road trip series. This has been such a fun series so far, and we're only halfway through. So we have been following the Israelites, God's chosen people, through their road trip in the wilderness for how many years? Yep, you're right, for 40 years. Crazy, right? Yeah, I know. So we have been following their story, and last week, We saw how God provided food for them in the desert. He dropped quail out of the sky and caused manna to uh, just accumulate on the ground. And he gave them food in the middle of nowhere. Yep, he's an awesome God. And today we're going to find out how even though he's been providing for them, our Israelite friends have gone back to being a little bit whiny. And this time they are thirsty. So we're going to find out how God uniquely provided for them in the wilderness. Now, I don't know if you know much about the wilderness or the desert, but there's not a lot of rain there, not a lot of water. So for God to provide water for that many people in the middle of the desert is amazing. But we'll talk about that, that a little bit later. But first, you know what we have to do. We have to say our confessions. Why, Miss D? Because the Bible says we can have whatsoever we say. And I want to make sure that we are confessing good things about ourselves so that it comes to pass. This a uh, couple weeks ago, we had Linnea come into our studio and help us out with confessions. So Linnea, take it away. I love God. I love the Lord Jesus Christ, the blessed Holy Spirit, the things of the Spirit, the Word of God, the work of God, and the people of God better than I love anything else in all this world. I put on the whole armor of God so that I can stand against the devil's scheme, the helmet of salvation, the shoes of peace, the belt of truth. The breastplate, of, the breastplate of righteousness and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And I will use the word to knock down, to crush, and to stop anything that is not of God. I'm a winner. I am a winner, born to be a leader, to set the captains free, to lead men in the path of righteousness for his name's sake, because I'm a righteous seed. Goodbye. Children. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much, Linnea. I so appreciate you coming in to the studio and helping us out with confessions. Kids, don't forget, if even if you've never been in the studio, you can always send me a video, KB Kids, WCCKBKids at gmail.com, and you can send in a video of you leading us in confessions. I would love to add you to our Sunday morning virtual worship. All right, guys, you know what time it is. It is praise and worship time, and I'm excited to lift Jesus higher this morning. 
coming. So we are gearing up for our VBS. We'll talk a little bit more of that during announcement time, but we are gearing up for our VBS this year and it is going to be a mix of virtual and a live VBS. So I wanted to sing some songs through from our past VBS just to get us in the mood for this year's VBS at the end of July. So today our first song is Your Power Will Pull Us Through from the Rocky Railway VBS. So let's sing it together. Trust in you, Jesus, you're all, you're all, you're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you, we're trusting in you. To lead us, we're on the right track oh, 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 oh. Wide open spaces for wide open eyes We're looking ahead for the next big surprise oh, oh, oh. I love that. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you. All right. So we are going to sing next. We're, I'm trusting you. And I'm trusting you comes from our Roar VBS. We did that about two years ago, I think. So I'm trusting you, Roar VBS.
like anything can happen Can't hardly wait to see what's next I wanna face this world with wonder and excitement Face every challenge every day remember the motions I hope so all right last but not least we are doing never let go of me from our shipwrecked VBS I hope you guys remember that because I love this song because it reminds us that God is always there for us that he is never letting go for us go of us even as he was with the children of Israel in the desert he is with you even now today all right let's sing it together never let go of me shipwrecked VBS storm of life, I know you're by my side, so I am holding on to your promises, you are the God who holds my future, all my dreams, so I am holding on, you'll never let go of me, you gave me hope when hope was all but gone, a second chance to sing a brand new song You opened up my eyes to see You rescued me, rescued me You showed the way when there was no way out Cleared up my mind when you erased all doubt You made me strong when I enjoyed those VBS songs. I hope you guys are ready for our 2021 VBS. I hope you're registered, but again, we'll talk about that in a little bit. All right, right now it is scripture memory time. It is time to hide the word of God deep in our hearts so that we know that we know that we know who we are in Christ. All right, so today we're talking about 
God knows what he, what we need and that God takes care of us. So the scripture that we have for today comes from Philippians 4 verse 19. And this is what it says. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I love this scripture. This is a scripture that my parents made me confess and memorize even as a young child. And you know what this scripture just reminds us? That God is always here for us, that God knows what we need and that he will supply it. Now, as a young child, I always said, oh, well, if God supplies all that I need, then I should be able to get that brand new video game, right? Mm. The key word is this, all that we need. There are differences between needs and wants. Now, there's nothing wrong with wanting something, but you don't always get what you want, but God will always provide for you what you need. So let's say that together. Philippians 4 verse 19, and it says, And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That is great. So my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Jesus. I want you guys to remember that scripture. I want you to hide it deep down in your hearts. So whenever you need something, you can confess back to God or you can pray back to God. God, you said that you would supply everything that we need. I thank you that I have everything that I need. If you need new clothes for school, thank them for your new clothes. If you need school fees, thank them for your school fees. If you, whatever it is that you need, Thank him for those things because he already said he will provide. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, guys, let's get into our announcement time. I am so excited about our announcement today because it's all about VBS. You knew what I was going to say already. VBS. I am excited about it because I love, I love, I love taking time out to learn more about God each and every opportunity that I get. So this year, our VBS theme is treasured. You are priceless to God. You are a priceless treasure. And that's what we're gonna be learning about during our VBS week. VBS this year is July 26th to the 30th and the 31st, which is going to be our live from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And we're gonna kind of go through a VBS day and have some fun, play some games, eat some food, win some prizes. You know how we do, so I can't wait. But you have to register for VBS. So make sure you go on our website, uh, WheatonChristianCenter.com. You can click on the KB Kids page, and right there you will see a link for our VBS. Don't delay because we are uh, gathering materials, we're ordering materials, so make sure you sign up. We have two VBS pickups this year on the 18th and the 25th. So you can come here on Sunday and you can um, grab your materials and get ready for our online portion of our VBS. If you are out of town or not in the area, don't worry. Uh, we can send it to your home or to wherever you are to make sure that you can participate with us because we want everybody present for our VBS this year, okay? I hope you guys are getting excited. I know I'm getting excited. Let's check out the promo video for this year's VBS. Get ready. I am a priceless treasure. God knows me, God hears me, God is my comfort. To embark on an epic quest. Nothing better forgiven and chosen forever. And discover God's greatest treasure. I am a treasure. Awesome. I hope you guys are getting excited. 
I cannot wait. So make sure you have your parents register for you so you are ready for this year's VBS. All right, guys, let's get straight into our offering. If your parents text to give, they can use the information on the screen. Let's say our confessions together. Say, Father, I thank you as we obey your word in giving and receiving. I thank you that all our needs are met and that we are blessed to be a blessing to your people. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, it is a lesson time, and I am excited about our lesson today because we are continuing on our road trip through the wilderness with the Israelites. Now, today, uh, we are talking about rest and rest stops. So have you guys ever been on a road trip and maybe you had to go to the bathroom or uh, maybe you just needed a snack? Maybe it's not dinner time, just a snack, or maybe you just wanted to get out and stretch your legs. Well, the, they have these things called rest stops and rest stops are uh, places where you can stop and take a break that is outside the city or the, uh, the closest town. Because sometimes when you get into the city or the town, there's traffic, there's a lot of people, everything takes a long time, but a rest stop is designed for you to get in and get out um, in relatively quick fashion. So I love rest stops because when you go to rest stops, you can find all these brochures and maps and a lot of interesting things that you can do in the surrounding towns. So sometimes if you're on a road trip and you're thinking, oh, we're gonna stop here for the night, what's there to do? Then you could look around and you could take out the brochures and find the pictures and find the different things that are uh, designed for you to come and see. And you could just take a break from being in the road, being in the car, being right next to your sister who's being super annoying, right? So um, I love rest stops. And rest stops also give us an opportunity to do what? Yeah, to rest, to take a break. And the Israelites today, we're talking about the Israelites, and they were going through the wilderness, and it seems like maybe they needed a rest stop, right? Maybe they're walking and it's hot. And so sometimes when you're hot or you're tired, things, you know, you start complaining. You know, sometimes when you're in the car, it's been a long time. You're like, are we there yet? Are we getting there? And you start complaining as well. And mom and dad are like, yeah, you know what? Uh, we need a break. We need a rest. Everybody needs to chill out, you know, you know, stretch your legs, um, do whatever. So that's kind of what happened to the Israelites. They needed a break because they start whining once again about this time having water. Oh, we don't have any water. Oh, why didn't you just let us die in Israel? Oh, why did you bring uh, in Egypt? Why did you bring us out here? And they started complaining and whining. And then Moses goes to God and he says, God, these people, they don't stop whining. But God told Moses, listen to the people and I will provide for them. So Moses took time out to speak to God. If the Israelites would have taken the time out to speak to God for themselves, don't you think God would have provided? Absolutely. Just like our scripture for today says, God will provide all our needs. Water was a real need that they had. But instead of asking God for it, taking time out, taking a break and seeking God, they just whined and complained about it. So before we get too far deep into our uh, lesson today, I want to remind you guys, we're going to watch our animated video about our story, and then we'll come back and finish up our lesson. The Faithful Hall of Fame, Moses. This is Moses, hey. who was an Israelite born in Egypt in a time when Israelite boys were not supposed to live. Wait, huh? Moses, however, grew up in the palace of the Pharaoh, the very man who was enslaving the Israelite people. When Moses grew up, he made a big mistake uh -oh. and fled Egypt uh -oh. to live with the Midianites. Uh. But God called Moses back to Egypt. Ah to deliver his people with the help of his brother Aaron. Ooh. After God showed his miraculous power in Egypt, he led the Israelites through the Red Sea and towards the Promised Land. They followed God who showed himself as a cloud by day and fire by night. As God led them through the wilderness, 
the Israelites became thirsty and hungry. Uh. They complained to Moses and Aaron uh. and said, if only we had died in Egypt. Uh. God said to Moses that he would provide for his people. Hey. Each morning they awoke and found manna for the day. What's that? And each night God gave them meat. <laughs> the people were still thirsty, and they were mad at Moses, saying, Did you bring us out here to die of thirst? Yeah. So Moses cried out to God, and God told Moses to strike a rock, and water came flowing out of it for the people to drink. And so the Lord provided for his people's needs. After traveling in the desert for three months, they came to Mount Sinai, and God called Moses from the top of the mountain. God spoke to Moses there of the future of his people and reminded him of the miracles of the past. After three days, there was thunder and lightning as a thick cloud covered the mountain. The people heard a loud trumpet blast. And Moses led people to the foot of the mountain to meet with God. God told them how his people were to live and how they were to honor him and respect each other. The Israelites had seen for themselves that God had spoken to Moses from heaven. These rules that God told them are called the Ten Commandments. And the Israelites feared God, for his mighty power had brought them out of slavery and provided for them in the desert. Awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope that you enjoyed seeing how God was faithful to the Israelites even when they were complainers. And that is a great thing about God. Even when we don't do the right thing, he is still watching out for us. He is still um, here for us and he is still providing for us. I don't know if it was me, I'd be like, you know what? You guys complain too much. I'm not giving you anything. Figure it out for yourself. But that's not what God did. So I want to encourage you guys today to take time out to seek God, to take time out to thank God, to take time out to talk to God. Instead of complaining, instead of whining, instead of pouting, take a rest, take a step back. And sometimes when we take a step back, we remember all the things that God has done for us. We remember all the things our parents have done for us. So then we're not so quick to complain or quick to pout or quick to you never or I always. None of those things are, uh, those things are rarely true. So I would encourage you guys today to take a rest, to take a rest stop when you need it, to take some time out to thank God for his provision and to talk to God when you have a need. God wants us to come to him. He wants us to be open with him. He wants us to have a relationship with him. Even though he knows everything that we need, it's so important for him to hear it coming from us. So I encourage you guys today to take a rest sometime throughout your day, throughout your week, and just to thank God for his provision and to seek him whenever you have a need. Amen? Amen. All right, guys, we are going to switch gears and we are going to hear from our puppet friends today. I'm sure Christy has more pictures to show Dave, and I'm not sure if Dave is here for it, but we're going to find out. So puppet friends, take it away. Hey, Dave. Oh, no, it's you again. Dave, I need to show you my pictures. I've seen your pictures, Kirsty. No, you haven't. You haven't seen them all. There's more? Wait until you see the rest stop. Rest stop? Here we are at the rest stop. Here we are heading into the visitor center. Here we are splitting up at the bathrooms. Who takes pictures of this? Here's my brother picking out travel brochures. He collects these things, you know. No, I don't. Here we are looking at the map to see where we were and where we had to come from. Amazing. 
And here we are outside on a bench. Are you guys napping? No, we're praying. At a rest stop? Sure, at a rest stop. Why not? I don't know. Rest stops are more for potty breaks and snack breaks. And travel brochures. Yes, and travel brochures. And according to my dad, rest stops are a great way to stop and thank God for always giving us what we need. We know that no matter where we are on the map, God is with us. And we take a moment to thank him for all the good things he's given us. That's really cool. Do you do that on every vacation? We do it every day. We always take some time to slow down and pray and thank God for all his blessings. You should try it sometime. Do I have to do it at a rest stop? You can do it anywhere you like. Good. I hate these, those rest stops. They're always so dirty. All right, guys, it is time for games. It is game time, and I'm excited today. We are talking about rest, and so we're going to play red light, green light. Yep, we're going to play red light, green light today. So hopefully you guys have some space, okay? So um, get some space, whether you're able to go outside or whether you have a basement or somewhere where you can, you know, kind of go a little bit far. So find yourself some space and meet me back here for a fun game of red light, green light. Watch and see this who we start to be KB kids affecting the world around us Positively we are growing day by day We are watching what we say We are kingdom builder kids and we're here to pave the way Hey, we are kingdom builders Building up the kingdom of the Lord I am a kingdom builder KB, KB, KB say I am a kingdom builder Building up the kingdom of the Lord I am a kingdom builder KB, KB, KB say I am a kingdom builder Building up the kingdom of the Lord I am a kingdom builder One more time we are I am a kingdom builder Building up the kingdom of the Lord I am a kingdom builder KB kids out Wheaton Christian Center Kingdom Builders Children's Ministry guys it is game time we are back we are on location and today we are playing red light green light i have aiden i have gabriel and i have ethan can you guys say hi yeah. all right they are ready to play red light green light with us so make sure you guys have a lot of room or as much room as you can and go along go ahead and play along with us when i say green light you go when i say yo you take a rest and you walk and when i say red light make sure you stop all right here we go boys are you ready Ready? Green light! Red light! Yellow light! Red light! Green light! Red light! Red light! Yellow light! Yellow light! Yellow light! Yellow light! Yellow light! Red light! guys i hope you had fun with red light green light today i hope you guys won and i hope that when it was yellow light you took some time to rest and of course red light you have to stop all right we're going to continue on with a lesson recap i can't believe we're already at the end of the show but that's what happens you know time flies when you're having fun all right we are here with lesson recap so i hope you guys were listening to the animated story to the lesson um to the puppet friends to all the things to make sure that you know the answers all right here it is question number one the people complained in today's scripture because they were a tired b hungry or c thirsty in our scripture today in our lesson today the israelites were complaining why why this time yeah they were 
thirsty. They were like, oh, I'm so, have you ever been really thirsty before? It's just like your throat kind of closes up and you know, everything's dry and it's hard to swallow. So I believe that they were thirsty, but I mean, they were just, you know, uh, very professional complainers. So they were complaining about being thirsty. Very good. All right, here we go is question number two. When the people complained to Moses, Moses talked to A, their leaders, B, God, or his brother Aaron. Mm, this is important. When people are complaining or people are treating you poorly, who do you run to? Do you go and talk to other people? Do you go and talk to even your siblings? Or do you talk to God? Moses went straight to God. He took a break and he said, you know what, I need to rest. I need to take a time out. I need to talk to God about my situation. And that is exactly what he did. All right, here it is, question number three. God made water come from A, a rock, B, the sky, or C, the ocean. Mm. I said he created it in a unique way. I don't know if it's been done before, or if it's been done since, but God was unique in this way that he provided for his children. He uh, brought water out of a rock. Very good, out of a rock. So all of a sudden, you know, you're just standing there and all of a sudden it's like, you know, ksh, you're like, oh wow, you know, water and it tastes good. Like what, what is this? Yeah, so water out of a rock. All right, how are you guys doing so far? Hopefully you are three for three. Here it is, question number four. God is with us, A, at church, B, only when we pray, or C, always? Now, I love this question, and I love this answer. C, always. God is with us if we're on virtual worship, if we're in person worship, if we don't worship, like God is always with us at church, at home, at school, at play, at the park, wherever you are, God is always there. Isn't that amazing? I agree. Here it is, question number five for all the marbles, bragging rights in your home, at least for the week, question number five. We need to pause blank to thank God for his goodness every day at all highway rest stops or once a week at church. Hmm, when should we pause and thank God? When is it appropriate to do that? Yeah, every day, every day, whether at church, whether at rest stops, whether at home, whether at school, at the park, wherever you are, at a restaurant, wherever you are, pausing to thank God is always appropriate. Even if people are watching, even if people are not watching, knowing what God has done for me will always give me the confidence to thank him wherever I am. Amen? Amen. Well, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed our worship time today. I hope that you are learning from our Israelite friends to know that complaining is not the way to go, but trusting God is something that we want to get better at each and every day. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out in prayer. Pray with me, please. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for all that you've done, for all that you have taught us uh, today in our lessons. I thank you that you are the God who knows what we need and you are the God that provides everything that we need. I pray that your provision is over every family that is listening to me today. I pray that you bless them throughout the week with safety, with everything that they need until we are able to meet again next week. We love you and we thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. <laughs> Well, guys, once again, I am excited that you joined me for virtual worship this morning. I cannot wait until we are back again. Continue our summer road trip series, part five, next week. Until then, you have a fantastic week. Bye for now. Watch us see this who we start to be. KB kids affecting the world around us positively. We are growing day by day. We are watching what we say. We are kingdom builder kids and we're here to pave the way. Hey, we are kingdom builders, building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KB, 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 say.
I am a kingdom builder, building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KB, 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 say, I am a kingdom builder, building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. One more time, we are. I am a kingdom builder, building up the kingdom of the Lord. I am a kingdom builder. KB, kids, 